Hello everyone and welcome to our live coverage of the 2022 Ringers Western World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. This is the Melbourne Cup of Camp Drafting, offering $100,000 first prize money. It's the richest event of its kind in this uniquely Australian sport. And it's set to take place here in this incredible custom built facility, which is nestled in beautiful bushland at Borley Point on the New South Wales south coast. Glenn Morgan, it's an absolute privilege to be here. Shortly we'll witness some of Australia's best stock men and women in action. Yeah, thanks, Joe. We did. We started with 475 competitors. The semi-finals were back to 90. And here today, for the $400,000 in prize money, we're down to the top 28 competitors. Young guns like Will Durkin from Mount Isa, Wyatt Young from Tamworth, will take on the big names like the Mark Buttsworth and the Comiskey family for that championship gold buckle. The Hiscock family from Victoria are no strangers to success here at Wollinga Park. Vicky won the Ladies Dash for Cash last night and her husband Michael won the World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft last year. Last year I had a really good uh, draw on the cattle. Like Every time I went to the yard there were two or three cattle that I liked. I think confident looking at the cattle and knowing there's something there before I went in so I didn't have to make a quick decision on the fresh cattle. It's been a, a great 12 months, like it's been more recognised, I think. I think the money has sort of brought a lot of interest, especially people who don't camp draft. Uh, it's very professional, yeah. Um, horses are getting better and the training's getting better. Um, techniques are, are changing and adjusting. Picking that biddable cow when you're competing is, um, that's, that's, that is critical. It's one aspect, you, you know, experience will help you, but it's very hard to teach. To win this this year would be special. Um, it'd be really difficult knowing the competitors and how tough it is over four rounds. It doesn't matter where you go these days, there's a group of really, really good competitors. Everybody's really competitive, but it's relaxed. We all look out for one another and we're all competing together. We're all even when we start and as the week progresses, depending on the cattle we draw and the scores we put up, it's, it shortens up by the end of the, by Saturday. So let me take you through the very basics of camp drafting. The sport has its origins back when stockmen wanted to settle who was the best at controlling horse and steer. The competitor begins in the camp where he or she must select a single beast from the mob and hold them away from the herd. Once selected, the competitor calls for the gate to be opened. They then guide the steer around two pegs in a figure eight pattern. Should they manage to complete that section, the steer is guided through two further pegs known as the gate to end the round. The competitor is rewarded with a total score for how they perform in each section of the course. 26 points for cutout, four for the course, and 70 points for horsework. If they make an error anywhere along the way, the judge can crack them off with a whip. Well, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. I'm thrilled to be back here for a second year at the beautiful Wollinga Park, and I've made my way up to the top of the stands to just soak in the atmosphere, a sellout crowd. We had 475 riders at the start of the week, and this crowd gets to witness 28 of the best camp drafters fight it out. Shortly after, I'll make my way back down, and I'm gonna be hanging out with the riders in the thick of it to get their reactions straight after their runs. Looking forward to having Ali Mosley part of our coverage today. Glenn Morgan, first rider, is already in the camp. Pat Hardwick on Cool Runnings. He's the owner of this horse and he hails from Hawthorne in Melbourne. So one of the Southerners lining up in today's final. What a great assembly of riders we've got. Well, yes, you said Pat Hardwick starts it off. We go to Zach Jackson. Of course, from there, it's to Sarah Cooks and Steve Comiskey. Scott Bandy, Hugh Miles, Ben Hall, Wyatt Young, Andrew Sheridan and Steve Comiskey rounds up the top 10 in the competition. We've got 28 of Australia's elite contestants and the final contestant today will be Ben Rossiter riding opera. Will Durkin comes into this final with the highest score of 90. We'll talk more about that great young rider shortly but for now all the focus is on this man, Pat Hardwick. Yeah, that's correct. This is a little horse called Cool Runnings. It's by a very famous horse, One More Playboy. He started off in uh, the semi-final this morning with an 85.66. Now, I anticipate you're going to need to be in the very high 80s or early 90s if you're going to be one of the feature winners in this competition this year. 
He'll ride into that camp very quietly, very confidently, and the idea now is to select that beast that he's comfortable with. Just how high pressure is it for the first rider? Well, it's certainly he's setting the scene, he's setting the mode, and of course, but he wants to be cautious. He knows he's going to have to perform well, but of course, in, in this instance, he's the first of 28. Anything is possible. He'd like to be, I know, in a high 80s to, to maintain a good spot in, in the competition. Horses and riders are working Hereford steers here today that hail from Terry Snow's property. They've got a lot of good handle on them, which will make them easier to control for the riders. However, not so much luck for uh, Pat there, who's just been cracked off by the judges. Our judges today, David and Peter Grills and Luke Whitehead. Can you explain to our viewers what exactly happened there? Yeah, the situation was the beast, he, he cut out perfect. I mean, when I say perfect, it was a good performance. It was a solid cutout score. It'll come through very, very shortly. However, that beast had a mind of its own. It just cut that peg, put him in a situation that he knew that he could not recover. The judges had no hesitation but to, of course, crack that whip, and that'll be only a camp score that comes through for that contestant. Second rider out now, Zach Jackson. He's riding Peel Vale Playgirl. This is an open mare by Millionic Cheek out of a thoroughbred mare. Bred by Hugh Miles and purchased by Zach through the Nutrient Classic sales. Yes, now he had a first round qualifying score in the competition of 88.6. However, um, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. It's just a the luck of the draw in this competition, you know, making sure those cattle are settled, get him out and we get him on course is the main thing. So far so good. He's outside now and about to round the first peg, hopefully. Yeah, he, he has taken that first peg nicely. Now he's going to lose points, of course. He's going to lose points in that camp because the beast did beat him back. We did have a first contestant score of 19.33 for our first contestant, that was being Pat Hardwick. Okay, slowly round the second peg now, looking for the gate to close out the run here. It's made it through. Well, that's what we... The only thing that he'd be very disappointed was the situation that that beast beat him back in the camp. There's going to be, you know, points docked of that. I'm going to think at around about that 15, 16 point camp yard mm. score. And uh, however, apart from that, he did everything he needed to do outside. And a great achievement just to complete the course in such a high pressure event like this. Oh, certainly it is. So, and being out so early, um, you know, that also, it, it, there's a little bit of pressure there. He, he's not 100% certain with what he needs to do. So much required of horse and rider here. There are three mines operating in the cutout yard and outside in the arena here. It's very challenging for horse and rider. The great riders make it look so easy though, don't they? Oh, they certainly do. Now I have got a score coming through for our second competitor in the competition. Okay, there's just been a, a little computer hitch with our scores coming through for that contestant. Now All right, Sarah Cookson's our next rider in, and uh, she has been riding like an absolute demon uh, over these past couple of days. She's riding her 19-year-old mare, Paradise. Uh, she's by Hazelwood Conman, the legendary stallion out of a very well-performed mare. And Sarah is absolutely flying around the course here today. She's really got her eye in. Let's hope she can make it all the way around. It's looking good so far. I'll let you know on a little secret. She would be the most popular young cowgirl in Australian camp drafting. She comes from a fantastic family and she's as popular as any girl you'll ever find. That's Sarah Cookson and I. I know her dad, PJ, at Dirran Bandy in uh, South East Queensland. He would be ecstatic because these kids from the day they were born they were born to ride out at Luckenough, west of Canamble, and to see her here in the finals, that's fantastic <laughs> for young Sarah. And she's got a big, broad smile on her face. Uh, that was a fantastic run, uh, the best we've seen so far. As I said, she's riding in great form over these past couple of days and came into this final on uh, as one of the highest point scorers with a, a semi-final run score of 89.3. Yeah, that certainly was an 89.33. She will also be docked a few points in that camp. It wasn't perfect. It certainly wasn't. She'll know that, but she, boy, did she nail it outside. It really was good. We're moving on now to an absolute legend of the sport, Steve Comiskey. 
of course, the brother of Peter, who is a two-time winner of this event. Um, Steve today is on board as the fourth rider at Gigolo. This horse is a 21-year-old gelding. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, I've got the scores very quickly for Sarah Cookson. 16 in camp, 64 for horsework, 4 for course, and a total of 84 points. Good score. Okay, so Steve uh, came into this particular final today with a score of 87.66. So he's right up there. Oh, certainly is. Now, he won the first round. He's already collected $10,000 for winning the first round of our Willinga Park Gold Buckle Camp Drafting brought to us this year by Ringus Weston. And the horse that he rides this time is Gigolo. Based out of Capella in central Queensland. And he's a two-time Warwick Gold Cup winner, Steve Kamiski, One of the legends of the sport, as I said. And he's outside now and heading to the first peg. And he's rounding that successfully so far. His brother Peter has won this event twice at the Gold Buckle and, and I think there's a lot of people cheering behind the scenes. I spoke to both Steve and Pete a few days ago and I said, maybe this is your year, Steve. You've got to step up to the plate and certainly delivering the first and second peg nicely. Look at the pressure. Joe, it's on. He is riding for all money here this afternoon. What a beautiful run. Really nailed that gate. The judges are going to pay that pretty high. Of course, the, the competitors are having a little trouble in the camp this afternoon. They seem to be, uh, whether it's the pressure or the cattle early out, we're just not seeing a lot of good camp scores come through at this stage. Much better conditions today than these riders and horses have had to contend with uh, earlier this week with so much heavy rain falling in this part of New South Wales. But the course, as you can see, has dried out beautifully. Almost perfect conditions today. It has, uh, Joe. And we're just watching the replay of Pete Comiskey here on Gigolo. He brings that steer around, just sits back in the saddle, eases, and straight through the middle of that gate. And, and that's what these competitors endeavour to do each and every time, is to be square when they hit that gate. And our progressive lead is in the overall situation. Sarah Cookson, 173. She is our overall leader at this stage. Zach Jackson, 168. They are the top two at this stage. And Pat Hardwick there on third. We're going to take a break now and be back shortly to see Scott Bandy do his stuff as the fifth rider out. Welcome back to Willinga Park for the live coverage of the Ringers Western World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. We're four runs in and the best we've seen so far has come from Sarah Cookson, one of the two female riders lining up in this final. Well, there's something different this year and, and I know we spoke of it last year. Joe, it'd be lovely to see one of our count competitors, the young ladies in the sport of camp drafting, take out the competition. Sarah, she's a sentimental favourite. I've known her from the day they were born and uh, she's a great little competitor and works here at Willinga, believe it or not, for Terry. And uh, what a great contestant she is. She knows this facility better than anybody. How helpful is that when it comes to competition time, do you think? Well, it, it does and it doesn't. But, but I think the thing is, um, she knows cattle, she knows horses, she's been brought up in a family. So uh, we're getting ready to go with our next contestant. I believe Scott Bandy will be our next contestant riding his little horse in this competition, Morangia Last Destiny. A 12-year-old mare by the great Acres Destiny out of Kirkby Stardella. This uh, mare is owned by John Casey and George Bandy. And Scott himself is a five-time winner of the Man from Snow River, a great rider. He certainly is. He's one of three brothers that have all been heavily involved in the equine sports. So they had a background many years ago into rodeo. He's made the transition into camp drafting and, and another very popular figure. He's the eldest of the three brothers that have all competed. His son also competed, made the uh, top ten here last night in the second round of the competition. From Tuma in the Southern Highlands here in uh, southern New South Wales. And look at the Bandy family come up as one. <laughs> What a performance. The crowd erupt. You know that he's a local born and raised in this part of the world. 
five times winner of the man from Snowy River, the Kuriong Challenge. <laughs> He can ride and he's gone clear out there. Fantastic to see a very popular outcome uh, to this capacity crowd uh, watching this afternoon. Uh, Scott Bandy there on Mirangi Ella's Destiny. Uh, another one to get round. Uh, these cattle are working beautifully today, aren't they? Oh, they certainly are. And you can see in the replay of this instance where Scott manoeuvres between the changeover, between the first and second peg, this little horse and with, with Ali at this point of time, we've certainly uh, got one of our leaders in the competition. Ali, take it away. We certainly do, and one of our only two females in the final as well, Sarah. And you're a local here at Willinga. Yes, yeah, I work here and work for Terry. And, yeah, we uh, run the stock horse breeding program and, yeah, help with the embryo transfers and client horses. How do you feel? First final run. Yeah, that was exciting. A little disappointing to have the drop back, but, yeah, really happy with the way the mare went outside. She really put it in for me. Thanks very much, Sarah. Thank you. Sarah Cookson had a great run earlier and she is the current leader with a score of 84 for her run. Next rider in the camp is Hugh Miles, who needs no introduction. He's aboard here, Destiny Playgirl. OK, we've just had the score through for Scott Bandy. It's a score of 87 points, tallied with his 86.66, 17366. Now that's going to be very, very uh, close to the lead in our competition. We're watching, Hugh, we're watching Hugh Miles in action. Indeed, it is the boy from the country music city of Tamworth riding Destiny's Playgirl. Hugh Miles, he has won many of our major competitions in northern New South Wales, competed at all the big camp draftings from Warwick right through to Melbourne in Victoria. Beautiful horseman, he's got lovely hands, and uh, his horses are always peaking here at Wollinga. Look how tight he comes into this gate this afternoon. <laughs> Joe, that is what these competitors, you can see, we've got some good scores on the board. Now the pressure is starting to build. There's $100,000 winner's check for this competitor. Lovely combination there of Destiny's Playgirl and Hugh Miles getting around A-OK. -okay. A nice tight finish through the gate there. Wonderful display of horsemanship from Hugh, who hails from Tamworth, as you said, Glenn. His horse is presented in magnificent condition today, glistening under the south coast sunshine. Well, our next competitor getting ready into the camp as we see him ride forward at this point of time and all the way from uh, far north Queensland, this is Ben Hall from Julia Creek. And uh, Ben won the second round of the competition, riding Shiro Traditional Acres with a first round score of 88.66. About to leave the camp, uh, Ben Hall on Shiro Traditional Acres, a horse owned by Andrew Sheridan. And is a stallion by Acres Destiny out of a peachy stud tradition mare. An open stallion. He's been very successful. He's won uh, a shootout this year and uh, the Nutrien Classic in this particular season as well, performing well. Well, here he is. He's a third generation camp drafting competitor. His mum and dad, Terry and Christine Hall, brought him into the sport of camp drafting many years ago. And it's great to see their tradition of the whole family still at the top of their game and he's continued on from that very good round yesterday uh, ben hall it was indeed riding shiro traditional acres we have the score for our previous competitor hugh miles has come through with destiny playgirl we had a, a score today of 87 points had an 87.33 yesterday to take him to the overall lead 174.33 so that's our new leader Hugh Miles, 174.33. It's tight at the top, isn't it? Uh, we've seen so many complete runs so far today. This final is going to go right down to the wire. Oh, it certainly is, Joe. And, and you know, you see the names that keep coming forward, the Ben Halls, the Wyatt Youngs, the Steve Comiskeys. Matt Holtz has been on fire here, the Victorian. And uh, they're all yet to go. A big line-up of Australia's... Uh, finest horsemen and women in competition. Well, this is Wyatt Young in the camp now aboard Liberty Silver Rain. Uh, this horse is owned by Alan and Jenny Young, a mare by Acres Liberty Bow out of Greendale, Emily. The winner of open drafts, junior and juvenile drafts as well, a very versatile horse. 
Okay, the scores have just come through at this point of time for Ben Hall, which is exciting. 89 points in that round, 88.66 in the first round, 178.32. So our competitor from Julia Creek now becomes our leader in the competition. This rider, Wyatt Young, is in great form this year, having won the Sydney World Championship Camp Draft. Uh, but unfortunately, no luck today in this final. He's been cracked off early. Well, it is disappointing, and you can see that the uh, crowd recognises in this sport of camp drafting, you learn to ride the highs as well as the lows. And unfortunately for Wyatt, uh, an incredible young man. He's done so well with his horses in recent years. He won a couple of the major events up in uh, northern New South Wales and Queensland this year. He won the World Championship Camp Draft at Easter time in Sydney. He also took out the Challenge and the Classic this year in the uh, Nutrien Classic. So uh, what a season he's had indeed. Had a camp score today of 16 for Wyatt. 16 points only for our Tamworth competitor. Andrew Sheridan is on board Shiro Bess here, the grey homebred mare by Bluff Downs Beager out of a glimmer mare. Uh, this mare has run 13 second places. Uh, she's very consistent when it comes to uh, finishing these camp drafts in the top three. Can she win today? Well, we hope so. He's from the Riverina town of Wallandine, just on the outskirts of Wagga Wagga having a little trouble in the camp like a couple of our other competitors, but uh, I've watched him closely through the go rounds and he's been one of those guys that continually comes up with a really, really good run. But today, unfortunately, it will be a camp score and camp score only for Andrew. A great achievement nonetheless to have made the final of the Ringers Western World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. Uh, one of the most prestigious events of its kind anywhere in Australia. And we'll be back with more of our live coverage right after this break. leader Ben Hall and you're about to have your second ride as well aboard El Torio. You went so close in 2019. Do you think you can take it out this year? I hope so. It's um, a long way to go but it's um, yeah, always good to get a score on the board and let everyone else chase it. Speaking of a long way to go, you're from a rich uh, family. You've got a really good heritage of camp drafters in your family. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm uh, uh, like a fourth generation um, drover. Uh, we've handled stock and horses. My um, family has all their life. Um, grandfather drafted. My father's still drafting. He's um, 72, I think, this year, and he's still still pretty hard to beat. So, um, yeah, no, it's a great sport for for the whole family, you know. True Aussie spirit. Best of luck. Back to you, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Ali. Uh, he epitomises what this sport is all about, doesn't he? Um, reading cattle is, is a big part of this game, and that's what takes you to the top, as well as good horsemanship. And so far, he's on top of the leaderboard with a total score of 178.32. OK, we're getting set to go with our next contestant here this afternoon, Joe, and uh, we certainly welcome back into the camp. This will be contestant number 10, Steve Comiskey, joins us from Capella in central Queensland. This is Steve's second domination. This is Katie, and it was Katie that he won the opening round here in the $10,000 check here on Thursday afternoon. She's a great mare, Katie, one of my favourites on the camp draft circuit. Uh, she's now 15 years old. Uh, she's by Two Eyes Macho and uh, won the Open at Paradise Lagoons in this year, which is some achievement. It certainly is. Steve's also been a two-time Gold Cup uh, winning camp draft competitor. And uh, this mare's been in very, very good form. She certainly travelled well and, oh, so, so close. That is heartbreaking to come right through the two rounds, the qualifying semi-final this morning. And to miss that gate barely by inches, it's going to cost him in the overall scheme of things. The highs and lows of this sport. You can be a Paradise Lagoons winner one minute. Next week, you don't get round. And it's amazing, Joe, that's why this sport is so popular. It equalises with so many people from different walks of life. We saw it here this weekend. Some people with very limited experience seem to go well. They get through the semi-finals, um, and then you'll see the very best of them get whipped in the yard. Our 11th rider is in the camp now, and that is Matt Holes on Paris Reims. 
Yeah, Matt is a former Hunter Valley competitor. He also uh, one of two brothers that competed very, very successfully in their younger and junior days. Now uh, he's got a good team of horses once again. He's had a fairly enjoyable weekend so far. He's uh, got two here in the final. He's been very, very consistent. And uh, he'd be looking to uh, consolidate his first win in the competition. He came into this round with a score of 89 points, which is only one point off the lead. He split second and third in that opening round. You have to be pretty confident he's going to get the gate here, is he? It, time oh, may be. Oh, just through. <laughs> 40 seconds and it seems oh. like an eternity and, and you know you've got to ensure that you're under that time limit the uh, judges and the timekeepers have whistles there we will check that they're all happy with it and the scores will come very very shortly now for steve comiskey's score we've got a 57 for horsework three for course 21.3 81.3 for contestant number 10 steve comiskey now we've got one of the superstars of the sport uh, in the camp. I speak of Will Durkin. He is the leader coming into this final. He's a protege of the great Terry Hall. His parents, uh, Robert and Wendy, are the owners of this horse uh, he's riding here. He works three months a year with Terry Hall, breaking horses in. He's a contract musterer. He hails from a family of six near Claremont in central Queensland. Uh, he won the Warwick Stallion Draft this year on Nonda Southern Cross, a horse they call Denzel, and uh, was also successful in the Nutrien Open Draft at Tamworth. He is the form rider of the circuit, but not so much luck for him today here. No, well, that is disappointing for Will. He's a lovely young man. He's going to be a name that we'll hear a lot of in the years to come. He was the runner-up in the ACA Open Rider of the Year in 2021. He won the Stallion Draft at Warwick. And, of course, uh, he was a winner at the big Burketown uh, Open Drafting competition. So Will Durkin with Durkin's Jewel. Disappointing in this round. He did pick up $10,000 earlier today in that uh, second qualifying round of the competition. And uh, we wish him well for the future. A humble man, that Will. He'll go home and lick his wounds after that. Um, the highs and lows of camp drafting, as we've seen here today. Uh, so much can change in a blink of an eye or the sidestep of one of those uh, cattle. Today, of course, presented by Terry Snow, these lovely Hereford steers. have all been playing ball pretty well with our horses and riders. Oh, certainly is. Now, here's our second female competitor in Briny. Puttycomb. She's riding a horse that's owned by Peter Shakespeare, and this is a good little horse indeed. This is called Destiny of Her Own. Oh, that's a very, very good first peg for Bridie. She placed second last night in the Dash for Cash in the ladies' camp drafting competition, and it's good to see Bridie uh, putting some pressure on these men in this competition. She came in with a very, very good score. Listen to the crowd start to come up as she lines up that gate. Is she going to do it? Oh, yes! That is a brilliant run. Brilliant. Well, it's, it's fantastic as it's a great equaliser for when, men and women in our sport. And uh, those scores will come through very, very shortly for her. Surely she'll score well. Uh, probably has the potential to give uh, Ben Hall a bit of a nudge there at the top of the leaderboard. It, it'll be very close. I do have, though, uh, competitor number 11 score, Matt Holtz, has come through. He had a camp score of 22, 57 for horse work, three for course, 82 points in the final for a grand total of 171 for Matty Holtz. Ryan Puttigam, a brilliant run there from her. Uh, can't wait to see her score come through. We'll bring you that information shortly. But here's some perspective on the competition overall. Ben Hall still in the lead with 178.32. We'll take a break and we'll come back with the score for Bryony Puttigam.
Well, Bryony, it's certainly a family affair. Your partner, Pete, has won the championship on two occasions. How do you think you'll go? Do you think you'll beat him? Oh, I can only try. <laughs> I'm happy either way. What's, what's it like having a whole family competing? Your brother-in-law as well is in the final. Uh, we're just happy for anyone to do well. We're, um, we all enjoy it. We all know how hard it is to uh, make it all come together when it, when it counts. So, yeah, any win's a good win. Yeah. Right. Thanks so much, Bryony, and best of luck. Hopefully you can beat the boys. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> Bryony's riding in sensational form and we just saw her run uh, which was scored a 90. Um, overall though not enough to take her to the lead behind Ben Hall. Next rider in the camp Matt Betchaz on rain. Yeah this is a little horse that Matt has bred uh, 14 years of age. He's by Chevron Ivory and that was one of the toughest horses that we saw in the, uh, the camp drafting world here over the last 10 years I guess and uh, his progeny have produced some very, very good horses. Matt comes into the final with a uh, qualifying round this morning in the semis of 86.33. And he's been cracked off, unable to navigate around that first peg. Yeah, it's disappointing, but as you can hear, the crowd, they support him. They understand camp drafting like no other. The fact of the matter is there's so much luck in, in the selection <laughs> of your cattle when you yeah. go in. You like to uh, pick a steer with a nice, kind eye and a soft feature. And uh, unfortunately, he just sat up and made things very, very difficult for Matt and his little nomination called Rain. Breeding cattle is the key. And there's probably no one better at doing that than the man in the camp right now. This is the two-time World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft winner, Pete Kamiski. Well, it certainly is, and uh, Pete's got a great horse. He, he's certainly going to be one of the short-priced favourites in the competition. And uh, in this, on this occasion, he's riding a horse called Roy. Now, Roy is a eight-year-old stay. He's sired by that famous horse, Acres Destiny, that stands at the uh, for many, many years at Tamarang Stud at Tamworth, out of a Playboy mare. So uh, well and truly bred in the purple. Uh, he won the uh, run second in the novice at the Chinchilla Draft. He was the Rookie Horse of the Year, and he placed in the Gold Cup here recently. And his partner, Bryony, is currently sitting in second place for the World Championship final. Now, let's see what Pete can come up with here. Yeah, Joe, it'll be a long trip back to Nebo should she happen to beat him in that competition. Imagine sitting in a truck for 25 hours with your wife that has just beaten you for the gold buckle. Great horseman. He attributes a, a, a lot of time and energy to the sport of camp drafting in Australia, whether it be right up in the Gulf or right down in Victoria. He's a showman, Pete. Uh, he is poetry in motion to watch this rider, uh, one of my favourites on the circuit, uh, and he gives so much back to the sport as well uh, through coaching and, and mentoring. And this is why, because he's one of the best in the business, and he's about to get the gate here. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect run. He handles the pressure. He is, he is certainly an A-grader when it comes to pressure, to cattle, to horsemanship. It's a culmination of all those facets that make a champion camp draft rider, such as Pete Comiskey. He's won that gold buckle twice. He's coming in a few points behind. He was only 87.66, um, and those scores will come through for him very, very shortly. Meantime, uh, Matt uh, Bechaz, who got cracked off uh, the rider prior, um, no score there from him. Uh, shortly we'll have in the camp uh, Toby Rofe, but really looking forward to seeing uh, what score they come up with for Pete uh, Kamiski. Uh, to the naked eye, Glenn, do you think that run was enough to get him right up there in the top few? I think it's going to be in the high 80s, you know, 88, 89, 90, but whether or not it's going to be enough in the aggregate, and that's what we... we we award our winner the aggregate score over the two rounds and he's going to need to be in that uh, early 90s to do so here this afternoon. Well, I wasn't too far off. He was 22 points in the camp, 64 points for horsework, four for course, a 90-point score. However, he's a 177.6 over the two rounds. He still sits just behind our leader of the competition in Ben Hall with 178. At the moment, we're watching Toby Rofe on Holly, a homebred mare by Heatwave. She's 13 years old and she's run many places in these big drafts and been a regular finalist. Well, he certainly is. And uh, he has worked here all weekend. He's had a pretty good team of horses and he keeps turning up. And uh, 
once again, this is a, a very, very popular figure because he's one of the senior riders in the competition. He's certainly uh, well and truly experienced in the event, but he uses uh, all of his experience just falls short as that steer turned just momentarily before the <laughs> gate for young Toby there. Must be so challenging for riders to keep it all contained as that gate approaches. Um, it's never over until that beast is through, but they can pull up on you, they can dart sideways. So many things can happen in those last few bounds. Oh, it certainly is. And, and you know, the, the, the steer certainly can shy at the gate. They can, you know, start to uh, look for shortcuts. They'll duck and dive and turn back. And unfortunately for Toby, that's where the Pete Comiskeys of the world and those experienced riders just sit back off the steer, give him a little time to look and see where he's going. They don't overforce the situation. Well, getting to the business end of the competition now, and here's a real icon of the sport in the camp at the moment. Uh, rider number 17 in the draw, Mark Buttsworth, riding Agile Playgirl. Well, Mark won the uh, classic cutout here last night, $11,500. He marked a 25-point camp score in the runoff, and uh, he makes his home at Kingaroy in, in uh, central Queensland. He is uh, one of Australia's greatest all-round horsemen. He won that title at Dalby only two weeks ago. It was called the Australia's Greatest All Horseman. He won that award, nearly $40,000 in prize money. And uh, he is another very popular man in the sport. Bar. Argyle Playgirl, Mark Butsworth from King Roy. Look at this guy, ladies and gentlemen, as Pete Comiskey did. There it is, and uh, he has been in red-hot form over the last few weeks in this competition. This combination won the Super Beef Open at Paradise Lagoons and the Super Series at Warwick. They've been in great form, and that's certainly continued here at War Willinga Park today. Uh, he gives this 15-year-old mare a well-deserved pat down the neck and taking his helmet off uh, to ride out of the arena. It's pretty warm out there, isn't it, Ali? It's very warm, Joe. It certainly is. All the horses are getting probably a bit on their toes, as we would say in racing, Pete. Now, you're a man who knows how to win this competition, a two-time winner already. How are you feeling so far? Oh, uh, yeah, just uh, got off to a good start then. Got a 90, I think, in the in the Finland fourth round. So, uh, no, very happy with that. He's only a young horse, second year of uh, competition. So, yeah, really pleased. It's a real family affair, always for you guys, but particularly this year, your partner, Bryony, we just spoke to, and your brother, Steve, all in the final. Yeah, no, we've had a great year. Yeah, very lucky. Just be great to see one of you guys win. Oh, well, we'll try anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Thanks very much, Pete. All right, off to a quick break and then more action on the other side. Welcome back. Since we took the commercial break, the leaderboard has changed for this World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. Mark Buttsworth now on top there with a total score of 178.33, riding Eugle Bar Agile Playgirl. Yeah, that's right. He's relegated Ben Hall to Shiros down one hundredths of a point. It's the way in which the three judging scoring right, system works. He's on 178.32 is Ben Hall. We see now Mark Buttsworth at 178.33. So it is a very, very close competition. This rider's going to give it a shake too. Troy Palmer, a legend of the sport he is, riding Who's Divine. This horse is owned by the founder of this competition and the owner of Wollinga Park, Terry Snow. Who's Divine is a 13-year-old mare by Who's Top Cat out of Divine Miss Ray. And this combination won the 2017 Warwick Gold Cup. Yeah, Troy's also won the Sydney uh, Royal Easter Show on three occasions. He's a 19 times ABC Horse and Rider of the Year competitor, and he'll be really looking to put a high score on the board. He finished second in our semi final earlier today with an 89.66. However, heartbreak and disappointment can come in all sports, and this afternoon has come for Troy in camp drafting, and that'll be disappointing with his little nomination owned by Terry Snow called Who's Divine. One of the most decorated riders of the sport uh, will leave the arena without being able to uh, complete his run. Uh, it brings riders of all levels right back down to earth, this sport. Oh, it certainly does, and you can just see that... Well, I think... Ali has caught up with another one of our elite competitors here this afternoon as we get set for our next contestant. 
I have. I've found our new leader, Mark Buttsworth. Mark from Kingaroy in Queensland. Mark, you've been in the final every year, haven't won it yet. Do you think this could be it? Oh, gee. <laughs> There's some really good horses to come yet, but it's nice to be in a good spot. Um, yeah, I guess at least I know I'm going to get a good check, but it'd be lovely to stay there, yeah. And we haven't spoken a lot about the horses. What does it take to get a horse to this level competing at a World Championship gold buckle? Um, yeah, a lot of training at home and, you know, these better horses have got a bit of age on them. They, they've been through the smaller events and got, got show, show smart, I suppose, and, and, and got to handle the pressure, yeah. What would it be like to take home that $100,000 purse? Yeah, it's be make, make an awesome year. <laughs> no, that'd be unbelievable, yeah. All the way back to Queensland. Good luck, Mark. Back to you guys. It's been a great week for Mark so far. He won the cutout last night. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and he, he comes off a big win at Dolby only the week prior to that. So he's been in good form. As we turn our attention now to another one of the uh, competitors that work under the guidance of Terry Snow. He's based in southeast Queensland. This is Andrew Turvey in this competition. Riding Knight's Destiny's Playgirl. He's gone very wide there. Well, he's still on course, and that's the uh, object of the exercise. Of course, points will be deducted from being deep on that first peg. But what he can do now is, is tighten the course right up, try and accumulate some horsemanship points, and, and try and finish in the top ten, because a good check still awaits anyone that finishes here tonight in that top ten of our gold buckle ringers Western Wear World Championship camp drafting event. I'm not certain with time, Joe. I'm, um, we'll have to wait for the official ruling on that. Remember that 40-second time limit. He may have just fallen short of uh, curing the four points for gate on that occasion. Yes, uh, unfortunately, that was the case. Uh, the judges whip-cracking there, but a great display of horsemanship all the same on a pretty tricky steer. Josh Barnett is our next rider in the camp on Offer Whisper. This is an eight-year-old novice mare owned by Richard Barnett. Josh was previously the ABCRA most successful rider. He's finished second in the Wollinga Park Gold Buckle Championship and was second at the Sydney Royal Easter Show World Championships last year. OK, we've got a score coming through for our previous competitor on this occasion, Andrew Turvey. 21 points for cutout. Three for course, so he was short of that time. 55 points for horsework and 79 points in total. 167, his aggregate score for Andrew Turvey. Fantastic atmosphere here at Wollinga Park, Glen. Uh, we've seen some fine displays so far. It's tight at the top of the leaderboard, and at the moment it's Mark Buttsworth, our leader. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen a closer competition yet. Over the qualifying rounds, over the semi-final, and now we're in the grand final, one hundredth of a point separates first and second, which is $100,000. In second place here this afternoon, Ben Hall, Pete Comiskey with Roy sits in third and the first of our lady competitors, Bryony Puttigan, sits in fifth in the competition at this stage. Won't be long before Josh Barnett leaves the camp. Uh, he's selected his steer and they'll open the gates and off they go. Just as Josh is a very, very uh, colourful young man. He's been very successful in all sports, whether it be in the sport of rodeo. He was an Australian saddle bronc riding champion. He's, uh, as we saw last year, finished second and runner-up reserve champion in the uh, gold buckle camp drafting. Second at the Sydney Royal Easter Show. And boy, he is really tightening things up from that uh, opportunity. Boy, he's hanging yeah, in. That was a very good run there from Josh Barnett. Uh, he'll be... Scoring well on that, you'd think? Well, I think so. He got a little wide and a little deep on a couple of pegs, but that little horse, it's not very big, and Josh stands about six foot three tall. So um, he's done a very, very good job on a tight course. I like the way that he angled that gate. He knew that he was he was chasing points for horsemanship, so he, uh, he, he put it all out there, and he came in at a tight angle to ensure he made the time. And on the replay, you can see that He's really had to push hard to wind up towards that gate once he got those first two pegs completed. 
can't wait to see what he scores. It was certainly a great display riding every single stride of that horse and steer for a magnificent display. We'll be back with more on the other side of this break. Welcome back. We've just seen a very good run from number 21 in the draw, Zane Haberman, getting around A-OK -okay on Cat Swift. Well, he certainly uh, he came into the final with a good score of 88.3, and all he needed to do was maintain that consistency. As you can see on the replay, the scores have already been posted and coming up, but he really nailed that gate. He had a camp score of 21.3, 63 for horsework, 4 for course, Another 88 gives him a 176.3, and that's put him right up amongst our top five or six competitors at this stage riding Cat Swift. Great outcome there for Zane Haberman, uh, finishing at this stage up with some of the big names of the sport. Zane hails from Springshaw in Queensland. OK, I've just got a quick, a quick update have come through, Joe, on the uh, score for our Contestant number 20, Josh Barnett. We had 20.3, four for course, 62.6 riding off a whisper and a 172 in total. He had 87 in this round, 85 this morning. Not enough to put him at the top as we focus now on our next rider in the camp. And this is Q Miles on Chick Acres. A novice mare, a half sister to his great mare wishes. Well, this is another one. Here's one of the guys that's been knocking on the door here for quite a few years. He comes into this event with 89, so he's right amongst the overall event leaders. He was one point off the top. If he can maintain this consistency, just getting a little deeper on that second peg, but the boy, now he can face up. He's got a crossover. He's accumulated three for course. Huey Miles, he's another popular figure from the country music city of Tamworth, and boy, he's done it. The Tamworth man has put a good score on the board. This will be very, very close. Joe, I'm predicting a very, very high 89 or 90 plus. With that accumulated with his first round 89, he's going to be right amongst the overall leaders. The camp will play an integral part in his camp score as it comes through. So far in this final, the highest score for this particular number of runs has been Mark Buttsworth on 90 and he is the overall leader. Also scoring a 90 in this final was Bryony Puddicum. We're still waiting for that score to come through from Hugh Miles. Uh, meantime uh, we've got uh, Ben Hall back in the camp this time on Altorio. Well, Ben knows how far it is to get back to Julia Creek, and you can rest assured, as he said, he's a fourth-generation horseman, drover, and, uh, of course, I know Mum and Dad, Terry and Christine, will be watching very, very closely at home. Ben has done their family proud, as he has in entire life. He's done another great job here this afternoon. Very well performed uh, horse, uh, El Torio, the ACA Open Horse of the Year in 2017, winner of the Cannings Downs at Warwick in 2014 and champion of champions at Paradise Lagoons in 2017. And of course, Ben, as we've outlined earlier in the coverage, a two-time winner of the Warwick Gold Cup and he's currently the ACA Open Rider of the Year. He's scored well here. Well, I've got the scores have come through for Hugh Miles from Tamworth, New South Wales. Listen to this. If you're a Hugh Miles supporter with Chicks Acres, he had a camp score of 22.3, 63.66 for horsework, four for course, 90 points as I predicted, 179 and a brand new overall leader here this afternoon with a 179 takes him to the lead in the Ringers Western World Championship gold buckle, Hugh Miles. It's become an ever-changing 
leaderboard. Uh, as was expected, uh, this final was going to go right down to the wire and it's playing out that way at the moment. Uh, this is rider number 24 in our draw of 28, uh, Peter Bolton on Reflex. He's from Mafra in Victoria. Yeah, well, Pete, there's another one that's ridden and competed at all the major events throughout New South Wales. Just recapping our previous Ben Hall score, it was 21.6 for cutout, 63 points for horsework, 4 for course, 88.66, and once again, another 176.32 for Ben Hall. Well, it's Peter Bolton that we're watching on course, Joe, this time. And uh, Peter had a little difficulty in the camp. And as you can see, if you adopt points in that camp for your cutout, it really takes away the emphasis of them high scores. He, he has navigated a full course. He'd be happy with his horse work outside. However, it'll be disappointing with the losing that beast back in the camp. And of course, once you get to the back fence, points are docked and they're docked very harshly. Just four more runs to go at this stage of what has been an outstanding display right throughout the competition. Uh, Pete Kamiski uh, is back in the camp, this time on Just Jim, a gelding by Soda Justice. Yeah, that's a horse that the Wilson family had for many years in that uh, Gunnada region of northern New South Wales. As far as I can recall, Pete Kamiski has won the Rider of the Year in the ACA on no less than 20 occasions. There's not a camp drafting in Central or North Queensland that this guy hasn't won over his long and lustrous career in the sport. He does it clockwork like. <laughs> he sure does. One of the great examples of what a top camp drafting horse and rider should do. And uh, he's got around okay there. We'll wait for his score to come through with Matt Hulse uh, returning to the camp on Nonda Last Frontier. A horse uh, bred by the Pasco family in Queensland and we'll have a look at that horse in action right after this short commercial break. Yeah, well, let's hope it holds up. We've got a couple left to go, so I don't want to get my hopes up. Speaking of getting hopes up, what do you reckon? There's only three more to go. Do you think you'll get knocked off? Um, well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. There's a, the guy in the camp now that's about to go. Matty Holtz has got a really good score, so uh, I don't know what the other guys are. We'll just have to see what happens and, and, and go from there and, and um, let the camp draft god sort it out. You've got some very good mares in your team, one of which is here. How have they been this week? Yeah, I've been, I'm very fortunate to have a very good string of horses and um, I brought down 11 and um, had five back into the semi-finals and two back into the finals and generally if um, they should have all got here but it was, it's all right or my, my fault of either, you know, I've done something here or there or and a couple of the cattle have played a part but um, yeah, the horses have been great, um, my staff have been awesome and you know, I can't fault, I can't fault the horses at all, it's, um, it's been a team effort and they've been really good, they've held up their end of the deal. Hopefully we're catching up with you very shortly in just a couple more rides. Good luck. Back to you guys. Hugh Miles, our current leader in this competition with three riders left to go. Matt Holes, Robert Daly and Ben Rossiter. Are any of those gentlemen potentially going to take the lead, do you think? Well, I think if, if any of them are going to... You know, there's a possibility Robert Daly's only 88.33, but Matt Holtz has been in good form. He came in in the first day of competition back on Wednesday. It was raining, it was cold, and he put some really good scores on the board of the high 80s, early 90s. Um, Matt has got a great little horse he's riding this year called Nonda Last mm. Frontier. He's experienced, he knows how to ride under pressure. And uh, if luck goes his way, he's one guy that I would never underestimate on camp right this minute. Nonda Last Frontier is owned by Jody Rosinski from Victoria. She bought the horse as a yearling and he carries the famous Nonda prefix from the Nonda Down Station up near Julia Creek in the northwest of Queensland. They've been great cattle horses since 1923 and this is another example. 
Yeah, well, Matt's a second-generation uh, competitor. His dad was a very successful camp draft rider in the Hunter Valley around Maitland and Scone for many, many years. He and his brother also competed successfully. As I predicted, Matt Holtz won't go down without a good fight, and hasn't he done it? And I know Hugh Miles would be waiting and watching with anticipation on that score. As Hugh said, I anticipated Matty Holtz was one to watch in his final three competitors. Great horse there at Nonda Last Frontier. Uh, very cowy too uh, as they went through the gates. So wanting to give that steer a bit of a nip. Well, they're, bre <laughs> they're bred to watch cattle. They're, they're bred to participate. They're bred to challenge themselves. And, and hence the reason they're used seven days a week, some of these horses, mustering, working stock, working on the properties and stations. And we see them to promote their sport here in this competition of camp drafting. Nonda Last Frontier is a real credit to his breeders, uh, Dr David and Heather Pascoe from the Darling Downs in Queensland. Uh, they have a very good stallion on their roster at home and that's uh, Nonda Southern Cross who's been taking all before him on the camp draft circuit over the past 12 months. Well, Next rider here, Robert Daly on Mrs Robinson. I've got to cut in. I've got to cut in. The scores have just come through for Matty Holtz. 22.3 in the camp. 63.3 for horsework, 4 for course, 89.66, 179.32, and we have a brand new leader, Joe, in Matt Holtz. There you go. This is our second last rider out now. Clearing the first peg, okay. Uh, he's heading into the second now. This is Robert Daly on Mrs. Robinson, and he's really got the eye in. He's slowing up a little bit here. As he navigates the corner to head towards the gate, which you would think, based on what we've seen so far, he's more than likely going to get through OK. Probably a little difficult, if anything, to steer. Just starting to back off the pace, but he's just got to ease up on him, ease up, and he did. He eased up, let that steer see where he was going, didn't over-pressurise this moment. And, of course, when he backed off that horse and steer straightened up, and, of course, uh, we saw Robert Daly finish with Mrs Robinson. Great run there from Robert Daly, who comes from Roma in Queensland on the seven-year-old mare, Mrs. Robinson. So one more rider to go in this 28-rider draw, and that's Ben Rossiter on Oprah. Of course, uh, our leader has come late in the piece. So we just want to recap Matt Holtz's score for our viewers. 179.32, Matt Holtz goes... 0.32 of a point in front of Hugh Miles with Chick Akers. Mark Buttsworth's been relegated with Yugelbar Argyle Playgirl to third in the competition, rounded up by Ben Hall with traditional Akers. They're the top four at this competition with only one final contestant remaining. Last rider in the camp now, Ben Rossiter on this nine-year-old mare by Conductor Opera. A multiple juvenile winner and has had various places in open drafts. Ben himself has been to this camp draft on three occasions and made the finals every time. Real credit to him. Certainly is. I do have a score just come through on the monitor for Robert Daly with Mrs. Robinson. 21.6 for cutout, 60.6 for horsework, 4 for course, 86 points today. Total grand of 174 over the two rounds. Well, we're watching Ben Rosser to perform as we have with so many. 27 prior to him have finished the first and second peg nicely. He's looking to try and win that top 10. Oh, missed the gate. Pointing. You can understand there was pressure building. He needed to make a nice tight gate. Mm. He just angled momentarily early into that run, Joe. And of course, what happens in this event, you only are docked points for the gate, but your horsemanship is also docked a couple of points as well. And hence, he'll be disappointed, but he still wrapped up that first qualifying round this morning with an 85.66. And that concludes the competition and we've seen the leaderboard change on so many occasions, not surprisingly with the top horses on and riders we've seen lining up here. But uh, our winner for 2022 is Matt Holes on Nanda Last Frontier. Well, it was an absolutely nail-biting finish, but Matt, cheers all around. Everyone's coming to congratulate you. I tell you what, it's not too far to Victoria, and even less so now that you've got an extra 100k. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I can't thank the owners, Jamie, uh, Graham and Jody Rosinski, enough for 
and trusting me with a horse and you know he's, he's been a stellar horse for me and um, oh, I just thrilled for them and yeah it's, it's, a, it's a huge thrill to you know be here and be in the final and, and then put a good one round and yep and take the lead it's awesome. Not to mention the money what's it going to be like driving back for the next 100? No, it'll be pretty sweet <laughs> we might buy an ice cream or two. And you know what I love most? Everyone's lining up to come and congratulate you. That shows the true camaraderie of the sport. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're all friends here. We all help one another out. It's just, it's unreal how we can, you know, go away and compete. And, we're, you know, we can be as, as um, tough to compete, uh, t you know, tough competitors, but we all just, you know, want the best for each other. And, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a great sport. And then we talk about the horses and how important they are. You've got to have a, the, the strongest bond of all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this fella's, um, you know, he's been with me for a good few years now, and uh, yeah, he's just, he's been great. He's been awesome this season, and uh, it's just, yeah, you get a real affinity with him, you know, especially when you get them extra special ones like this bloke, and, and you can bring them through the grades, and and um, you know, get them to the top level, and and do well on them. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful to showcase good horses. So what happens now back in Victoria? How do you think you're going to spend it? Oh, it'll be pretty quiet. I'll <laughs> back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it won't be much different. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Off to a break. That's it. Now Matt Holtz, our winner of the hundred thousand dollar gold buckle camp draft. The 2022 Ringers Western World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft has been decided and the winner came late in the piece, Matt Holes riding Nonda Last Frontier. Yeah, it was great. He, he third last out, generally a little deep in the draw. People are nervous, but Matt Holtz kept his cool. He was very, very uh, calm in that camp. And, and, you know, to get up by point three of a point is amazing. Hugh Miles, can feel disappointed that he ran second. Mark Buttsworth third. Ben Hall with Shiros Tradition Lake is fourth. They're the top money winners, but they're all big names. Let's just watch that replay uh, qu quickly for Matty Holtz, and you'll see where the judges uh, have worked. That he's so close to that beast. He's centred to the course. He gets around that first peg nicely. Now this is when he sits back in the saddle, just hesitates momentarily, gets that horse on the right lead. He moves up. Now it's important that he doesn't go too forward and cut this steer off. He just sits back off his eye, sits back, sits back. Now this is where he made a lot of good points. He really angled that uh, gate quickly and he was precise. There was no hesitation. He nailed it and that's I'm sure where the judges really awarded those horsemanship points as he wound up towards that gate for Matty Holtz, Joe. A foot perfect run from Matt Holes and Nonda at last a frontier. Sees Matt uh, wearing the gold buckle home to uh, Victoria this year. Uh, a great thrill for all concerned with this 10 year old uh, stallion, a son of the legendary Hazelwood Con man. He certainly is a 10 year old stallion, but I tell you what, he's acting like a little lamb now, isn't he? Yeah, he's probably tired after, um, you know, four good runs and. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough conditions for them when you travel them away. They, you know, they're in pens and you've got to look after them the best you can. But, you know, it's wet here and wet conditions. So, you know, out in yards that, um, you know, they get tired. They, they, he'll be looking forward to his paddock and lay down and, yeah, have a good spell. Yeah. Very much well deserved. Just speaking of the event overall for the week, Matt, how's it been? This is world class in Australia. Oh, there's no doubt about that. It's just, it's incredible what they've done here. This facility is, is just yeah, seeing it second to none doesn't give it justice. Um, you know what they've done over the years, trying to improve things. You know, Ali, it's just been, it's it's been um, they've taken on um, you know advice and, and and that sort of thing, so that you know they've they've improved it to a point where oh, it's it's just it's unreal now. Yeah. 
Yep. And you guys mix from across Australia as well. So Hugh Miles, who was second, of course, in Tamworth, and then Mark Buttsworth from absolutely everywhere. Talk about your competitors as well. You obviously all get along very well. Yeah, we do. It, it, it's great mateship. You know, it's, it's great to catch up. And, you know, there's there's quite a few big events throughout the year. And, you yeah, know, we, we catch up at those and, yeah, and have a few beers. And, yeah, and then, you know, we compete and, we, we, you know, we like to be sort of com you know, competitive or fierce even, you know. We, we, we there to win for ourselves or our owners but um but we're also there to cheer on our buddies so yeah it's awesome and we talk about again the real family aspect of it i know a lot of the riders have young families and you all come camping you're all away for a lot of the time i guess you almost become like family to each other <laughs> yeah that's for sure yeah we do yep yeah. as um yeah yeah you know you have certain mates that you just yeah like family and you know i've got to pay a huge credit to a uh, mate of mine warwick <laughs> um yeah, he's just, he's been there for me. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty special. And he can't be here today? No, no, he's here. Yeah, he's helped, helped me pick cattle and yeah, no, he's just been a, a great mate and just stuck by me. He's, yeah, it's pretty good. It's so nice. That shows the true, and it's the true Aussie spirit here. Thanks, guys. It's been wonderful being down here and, and seeing the real emotion on everyone. Back to you, Joe and Glenn. Lovely scenes there with the, our winner for this year, Matt Holes, getting emotional towards the, the end of that conversation with Ali. Uh, so much goes into this sport. It's quite unbelievable. And those horses and riders, they spend so much time together in the saddle and out working with and without cattle. Uh, and there are so many other people behind the scenes that play such an important role as well. And, that was something Matt highlighted and that was his friend that's helped him to pick the cattle and that can be the difference between winning and losing these top drafts. Oh, it certainly is, Joe. I know that he's talking of Warwick Lawrence and, you know, it hasn't been an uh, easy road for him for many, many years, but what an event. It was so pleased to see him win it and, uh, you, like you, it was the best of all championship events we've watched here in Wollinga. Nonda Last Frontier and Matt Holes, our champions for 2022. Hope you enjoyed our live coverage here from Wollinga Park. We'll see you next year.